Well, outside of China, soybean export demand has been surprisingly strong, but the loss of China is a big hit to demand. And as soybean demand is looking for a new shining star, engineers here at Iowa State have been working on creating something new from soybeans and one that could be a game changer for something you use every day. This paved parking lot may look like asphalt you'd find anywhere, but what you don't realize at first glance is this pavement is actually made from soybeans. If as a chemist you look at the soybean molecule itself, it's, it's just an absolute dream. It's just a playground. There's so many different things that you can do with it. Eric Cochran says he didn't discover the power and utility of soybean oil until around 2010. What we discovered is you can string it in the long chains of soybean oil that have uh, really elastic rubbery properties. And what asphalt needs is the ability to uh, withstand these, you know, semi-grade traffic in the hot summers without forming ruts, without getting brittle um, in the cold winters. And, and special types of polymers uh, called elastomers or rubbers are what they use for that. And what we found is that soybean oil made a replacement for um, the polymer SBS um, that um, they traditionally use. But in 2008, a major shortage of SPS caused a bit of a crisis in the asphalt industry. And since these researchers had just figured out how to make tire rubber out of soybean oil, they had an idea. And so it wasn't long before he was asking if he could try our new soybean rubber in, in asphalt and things uh, just kind of cascaded from there. But prior to 2010, would you have ever thought that soybeans could potentially be an ingredient in asphalt. No, it was not on my radar. Not, not on my radar at all. Uh, we had seen a lot of market increases in asphalt uh, as, the, as the supply uh, was getting tight for the demand. And, and what we often do in the United States is when we have an economic downturn, we, we correct that by putting a lot of investment into infrastructure. Everybody benefits from uh, infrastructure, especially highways. We get more efficient roads, safer, uh, better fuel economy, uh, smoother roads, less deterioration on our vehicles, and, and it puts people to work. An initial investment helped the team construct this, a pilot plant to help take proof to concept. The pilot plant was the, the, the first flag in the ground that said these materials can make durable pavements. The pilot plant produced its first product in 2018, but the team needed to quickly expand to a larger scale. And with the support of groups like the United Soybean Board and the Iowa Soybean Association, the team spent the next five years pumping out more product to demonstrate just how durable the soy asphalt truly is. And that uh, really took the, you know, the next five years or so was, was really proving out the technology. Uh, we formed a startup company in, in 2020. And, um, you know, we're, we've worked out a lot of the manufacturing issues. We're starting to get customers now. And so it's really now is the time that we're, you know, we're just being able to take advantage of, of all this um, extensive testing that we've been able to do you know, through the university and largely with the support of the Iowa Soybean Association and the United Soybean Board. Do you think we are just now at the point, though, that we are seeing this investment pay off? Absolutely, because now we see people um, on the pavement maintenance side of things. We see pavement, uh, the people who are at the contractor level wanting to increase the amount of recycled materials, whether that's recycled pavements or recycled shingles. The soy product helps make those products substantially better. But now what they're discovering is instead of just burning soybean oil for energy, it's soy oil that could transform oil refineries across the U.S. and help them grow even more efficient. So what happens is that uh, a lot of the uh, polymer industry goes after the ethylenes. And you can get ethylenes from crude petroleum or from natural gas. So when the market shifts towards natural gas, you don't get the butadiene out of the refining, if you will, of the, of the natural gas whereas you get the butadiene out of the refining complex from crude petroleum. So when these market shifts go between natural gas and crude petroleum, there becomes a huge demand for our, our soy polymers. Williams says what soy polymers provide is consistency. When you look at price volatility of polymers, it's a wide range, okay? And the consistency of pricing in the soybean oil is, is a lot less volatile. And when you start looking at well, how you're going to do out, out projects in four, five, ten years, you know, lower volatility reduces your risk and expectation where those costs are going to go. 
And so I think that's really critical uh, for how we invest in our, our uh, infrastructure. I want you to consider, you know, rather than burning it for energy, we could use it to you know, really transform you know, how uh, the, the oil processing industry um, can be more efficient. And so you know, every, every ton of soybean oil that we produce can become a permanent part of the pavements that we drive on and you know, allow us to get more energy out of every barrel of crude oil. And the demand you said is there. And the demand is absolutely there. Uh, you know, the roads are crumbling. We need more pavement every year. Um, you know, in Iowa, there's about 70, 80,000 miles of unpaved roads alone. Um, you know, the you know civilization demands pavement, and that's really kind of the backbone of, of our economy is being able to efficiently move things from point A to point B. An alternative to what the refining complex is doing with a soy-based alternative that makes refineries more efficient and more profitable. I don't know what the latest count is on number of refineries in the United States. It was at 61. I know there's been two or three more closures more recently. We need to make our refineries viable economically, and we can use this technology not only to improve our refineries, but we also have an opportunity to make more jet fuel and other products that could be used to export and create a better economy for the United States in the refining through petroleum industry. This research may be the road less traveled, but it's paving the way for new uses of soy while driving even more soybean demand. Well, up next, a new twist on growing apples, but one that could allow Iowa growers to produce more apples on every acre. What researchers are uncovering here at Iowa State, that's next.